I will change the luxury travel experience in Greece. That's what I told my parents, quite bluntly, before I even had a company. As we were walking back from a gathering of hoteliers in a central Athens hotel. And of course, they knew me all too well to discard the possibility of arrogance, so they smiled like I was crazy. They probably thought it must have been the wine talking, uh, probably you know, the sort of thing where a few, a few drinks get people talking, and they'd be right today, by the way, because even one drink will get me talking. But uh, back then, I could have handled a few, so that was not it. Really, I wanted to change luxury travel for affluent visitors to Greece. So, how does one pursue a dream when others think it's crazy? How do we get to plus? What does plus really mean? So let me try and back up the equation I've put up on this slide, but let me warn you from the beginning that there are no mathematics, there are no theorems here. Just one data point of a young entrepreneur trying to fulfill a dream. So let me start from the beginning. Launching my luxury travel company seems to be a result of a series of coincidences, much like life tends to feel to many of us, right? Well, it's uh, somehow customary for MBAs to, to start the season, start the school year, with a trip. We magically understand that partying is going to be a great part of the experience, so we start the year with partying abroad, several other places um, in the world that become very trendy for MBAs all, all uh, through August, late August, early September. So my two best friends from business school, and those were Turks, by the way, so there goes one stereotype. Um, they had uh, planned a trip to Turkey, and I had taken on the, the task of continuing the trip on to Greece. And let me tell you that that trip was wonderful. And all of our other friends who had joined they also thought it was spectacular. They talked about the experience for weeks and weeks. So I took a step back and I thought that if on my spare time, for a bunch of my friends, I could have planned such a successful trip, imagine what I could do if I actually pursued this passionately as a profession. So in a twist of fate, I did something that to this day I consider completely nuts. I quit all MBA recruiting activities, and I focused on the one class that, little did I know, was going to change my life. And that class was called, with a very fat title, it was called Evaluating Entrepreneurial Opportunities. But simply put, it was writing a business plan. A lot of work that went into writing a business plan. So, Let me start with saying that opportunity is a great part of entrepreneurship, of the creative pursuit. In fact, early in the planning stage, my team and I, we discovered a hole in the market. We had the chance to talk to a lot of people, a lot of travel specialists um, in the US mainly, and Greece. And uh, a lot of people were telling us that affluent travelers, they did really want to travel to Greece. But they didn't know quite how to do it. They were even intimidated by the experience. So they would actually seek out help from travel professionals in their home country. But these travel professionals themselves were challenged. They couldn't quite navigate the operational difficulties in Greece. Some lacked the knowledge to guide people through such an experience. And Greek travel companies, we were told, that could have been possessing such knowledge. They could navigate the Greek system. Many of them maybe lacked a true understanding of the international elite traveler. Or even if they had that, they could have been lacking the marketing channels to approach them. So early on, I started sensing the invigorating smell of opportunity for me to bridge that gap. But it's not enough to actually spot an opportunity. I think the creative pursuit is actually more than that. In fact, I'd say that we have to actually plan, analyze, research, talk to people with experience before we even get started. 
And then when we actually go about doing the real thing, we may realize that all of our planning, all of our research was heading to a wrong direction. And we may even have to throw everything out the window. So was that time wasted? No. In fact, I'd argue that preparing for the best theoretical way to harness an opportunity is the best guarantee for us to be able to adjust in practice when it matters, as long as we're able to allow ourselves that luxury. As we're finding new stuff, finding out new stuff, we have to be able to adjust. If we haven't planned, it's that much harder. So here's my favorite quote from the planning stage. We don't touch Greece. We simply cannot maintain the quality of the experience there. And let me tell you, the person uttering these words back in 2004 was not someone to be discounted. She was, in fact, a senior vice president of a global travel company, arguably the best luxury travel company in the world to this day. And her words rang in my ears for years, and they still do. And it became my favorite quotation because I proved her wrong. Her words provided an inspiration, a drive, that only such a negative assessment of our country could have provided. I wanted to prove her wrong. But let me tell you that she was not the only one who doubted the success of my venture. There were, in fact, a lot of other travel professionals, mainly in the US. And again, remember, this is 2004. They were telling us things like, domestic airlines in Greece don't run because of strikes. And ferry companies don't announce their schedules ahead of time. They, allow, they announce them last minute. And when these ferries do run, who knows whether they'll be on time, whether they'll be on schedule. And when people who board these ferries get off, they find this ad hoc situation in the harbor. They can't really get a taxi. All in all, we kept hearing that Greece just doesn't have a service mentality. And even my Greek friends wouldn't get it. Very shortly after I started unraveling my true travel concept, that prefix, true, started becoming part of our everyday interaction. So all of a sudden, I became true Christos. They would really, they'd call me up and they'd say, true Christos, let's go catch a true movie. Let's go catch a true drink. And very recently, I got a birthday wish, wishing me happy birthday, true Greek. But you see, there's a difference, in my humble opinion, between then and now. And that difference is that an opportunity was turned into a vision that was turned into reality. And that was a reality that few people thought possible at the time. So what happens when people tell us we'll fail? Do we give in to conventional wisdom? Because they might be right, you know. All these people, they could be right. Well, in my case, when people told me I'd fail, I grew even more stubborn, even more courageous. And I didn't do that out of spite. I really did it because I thought that if people tell us that something is hard, difficult, impossible even, it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it if we believed in it. And I did. I truly believed in it. I thought I could do this. So I set about doing it. The American poet, Robert Frost wrote, you don't believe in the future, you believe the future in. It comes in by your believing it. Just think about this. It comes in by your believing it. And here's where the most beautiful thing happened. Something that all doubters of my concept, I bet, could never have predicted. I found out there was an entire army of Greek people waiting to be inspired, waiting to bring out their underexploited potential. And they joined me. And where others saw difficulty, we saw opportunity. Where others feared lack of customer service, we empowered people to deliver on our true promise. Where others feared strikes, we actually thought, what a great way to actually work with people ahead of time to soften the blow. So slowly, some sort of bubble emerged, 
with crazy drivers just sprinting back and forth from the airport to retrieve a forgotten t-shirt for one of our guests who was just about to fly back home, my crazy staff in my office, or hoteliers alike, who would host people as if they were members of their own families, even crazy guys who would spend two or three hours on top of their hours, on top of their pay, simply to educate five-year-olds on mythology. Why? Because these five-year-olds just showed a genuine interest in our heritage, in our history. All these people were there. And to this day, they do an amazing job, and I'm truly grateful to all of them for the way they show our country, the way it's supposed to be shown. That's what they do. Most important, one could say that my vision was built around catching, or maybe even contributing, to a wave of a changing Greece. A Greece that was just about to stun the world with the 2004 Games, the Olympic Games, the, the Olympic Games achievement that we were all so proud of. So back then I spotted companies, new companies, uh, like GN Airlines or Blue Star Ferries, seemingly emerging from the shadows to complement a brand new airport in Athens, other valuable infra infrastructure in Athens and other surrounding areas. And new hotels were being built, others were getting renovated, and they would all match international standards. So again, I told myself, if, if someone could actually bundle all that, a fresh approach to travel in one of the most beautiful countries in the world, wouldn't that be something? What a valuable contribution that would make. I can make a difference that way. That can be my mark. Sure. I do understand that many people would bring the argument that today, in Greece, in 2013, such a creative wave is no longer possible. Look at the world out there in our country. Well, I couldn't disagree more. And I couldn't disagree more because I believe there's a fundamental difference between catching a wave and creating a wave. And even though I might agree that catching a wave in Greece today might be a stretch, I'd argue that creating a wave is actually easier than before. We need to dream more than before. We need to be inspired more than before. We need to contribute more than before. More than ever in a generation, people in this country have a need to change our lives. We all do. So let's take a step back and see how things seemingly are today. The media, domestic and international, tell us that so many things about our country are wrong. So many things just don't work the way they're supposed to. And don't go far, just look at all of our lives as Greeks living in this country. We can come up with plenty of examples from our everyday lives that indicate that such an assessment is indeed correct. I know I do. And what, would, what do we do then? We feel helpless. And we start joining a crowd that feels that our only destiny in life, our only path in life, is a destiny of failure, or even worse, immigration. But then someone might come along, and they typically call that person a leader, who actually does not accept the destiny of failure, but rather embraces a destiny of positive change. And what do we do then? We follow. And lead or follow, it doesn't really make a difference. As long as we lead or follow based on optimism, not based on some self-inflicted path of complacency, not based on self-fulfilling prophecies of doom. They're in us, we don't even understand, we don't even understand that they're in us. We have to change that. Our country is going through the toughest period, at least financially, in our modern history. So ask yourselves, what contribution do you want to make? Let's all find our plus 
and go out and do it. And I can tell you from personal experience that it can be done against the odds, against what people tell you, against what people think. We need this change. The people around us need this change. And our country needs this change. It can start from a personal level that will slowly grow into a collective level. And do notice in the equation of Budap, there are multiplication signs leading to plus. But in fact, I'd say that such an effort wouldn't be multiplied. It would be exponential. It would be viral. And if meaningless efforts, like Gangnam Style or Harlem Shake, can go viral throughout the world, don't we owe it to ourselves? Don't you think we owe it to our children? I have an 11-month-old daughter. To turn plus viral? Aiming at a noble cause? Our nation's talent, energy, intelligence and resilience have always been and will always be present in the hearts and minds of the Greek people. Really, all we need to do is bring out these traits. Inspire others to join us. In unison, it can be done. A person at a time, a team at a time, an organization at a time, a community at a time, this effort can and will go viral through an entire country that will show the world its true face of creativity and even claim its right to rebirth. It's our right. We have to chase it. We need to choose. Let's believe in it, for it can be done. And let's choose plus. Let's stun the world again. Thank you.